If you try to remove tattoos like this, which are all by itself, it is super easy to do so. You can just simply patch them out. But what about tattoos which are attached to something? No matter how careful you are, if you try to remove these, it creates that leak around it. Also, what about areas which have more tattoo than the skin and you have nothing to sample from? Like the neck right there. How do we take care of all of these tattoos? In this video, we will learn how to remove tattoos in stages. And these stages are based on complexity. And you can stop at the stage where all of the tattoos that you wanted to remove are removed. So let's go ahead and get started with stage number one. This is where you remove all of the island tattoos like this one like this one right here and also the 662 and tattoos like this which are all by itself and they are not attached to anything. First of all, let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J with the background layer selected and let's name this layer Stage 1. Now some of you might be asking why didn't Unmesh create a blank new layer because we're going to be using the patch tool right here and the patch tool doesn't work with blank layers. There is no right or wrong way to do stuff in Photoshop. You can use whatever method you want. This is just my preferred method. With the patch tool selected, make sure the patch is normal and simply start removing the island tattoos. In other words, tattoos that are all by themselves. Just select them and drag it to an area that is similar and just fits there. But then again, you will come across something called repeating patterns and it happens all the time with any kind of cloning. Have a look, this line just goes on and to fix it, you can just patch it one more time. So let's make the process faster. Remove as much as you can. Find out as many island tattoos and just remove them. Now, sometimes you might come across an issue where you don't have the complete space to fill up that area. If you try to do that, an additional area gets selected that you didn't want there. So how do you take care of that? Do it multiple times. So let's say up to this point, it looks okay. But there's that little tattoo still left at the bottom. Just do that and do that area again, which is left out and fixed. Now, although this tattoo, which is basically a line, is attached to his smile lines, we can still work on that because it's a very thin tattoo. So let's try to select that from there. Even though there's a little bit of leak, we can fix that later. But it's an easy fix, so why not try our hand at it? And it does the job. Let's see if we can fix this one without going into stage two. So let's select that. Make sure the lines align. They're not aligning. Now, one of the ways you can fix this is by using the content aware move tool. Just select the good areas. First of all, let's go back to how it was. Select one of those good areas like this and then just move it right here. You can also rotate it. Move the anchor point right there by holding the Alt key or the Option key and click just right there. So it will rotate from there. Everything right now aligns. So you can take your time to do that. I think this is perfect. Hit enter or return and there you go. That is fixed. You can go back to the patch tool right now and if there are some extra areas created because of it, that my friend was an easy fix. Let's see if there are any other island tattoos and sure there is. Now we are not going to work on tattoos like this or this even though they are island tattoos they are involved in a lot of highlights and shadows and trying to fix them with the patch tool might mess things up. So stage one of removing island or independent tattoo is done. Let us take a look at the before and after. So here is the before. Here is the after. Not many gone, still a significant difference before, after. Moving on to stage number two, where we take care of attached tattoos. For it, let's go ahead and make a copy of stage one by pressing Ctrl or Command J, let us not forget, and let's name it stage two. And this is for removing attached tattoos. Now there are two approaches to it. Number one is using the light and blend mode. Now what does that mean? If you select the healing brush tool and change the blend mode at the top from normal, to lighten, just remember, no matter what you do, it is only going to lighten or not do anything. It will never in any case darken anything. What does that mean? Let's take a look at this. The hair is brighter than the surrounding areas. It is actually the brightest, even brighter than the skin. The tattoo is darker than the skin. So if I take a sample from right here by holding the Alt key or the Option key and clicking right there, if I try to paint on the hair, no matter what I do, it is not doing anything. Why? Because the area that I'm painting in is brighter than the sampled area. But the tattoo is darker than the sampled area, so it's going to lighten just the tattoo. Let's sample that. It's only going to paint on the tattoo. It's not going to darken anything, which is a plus for us. Take a sample and paint. Now, after we take care of the boundary and detach it, it's easy to take care of the rest. Just select the patch tool, just select this mess and move it out. So that is how you detach 
and remove. The second approach is also very similar where we use the clone stamp tool to first detach and then remove it all. Have a look right here. So how do we detach first? Let's go ahead and select the clone stamp tool. Now keep in mind the clone stamp tool is simply copy and paste in a brush. So take a sample from right here, paint. By the way, you can also decrease the flow. Let's get it to 10%. Paint right here. You just have to create that barrier. That's it. Once we have done it, you can easily use the patch tool. From right here as well, let's create the barrier. Take a sample, increase the flow again, and line it up and paint. The barrier is done. Now select the patch tool right here. Just select all of this and simply patch it out. There you go. Now there's this area not lining up. We can take care of that not big issue. And that's how to remove an attached tattoo. Let's quickly remove the rest of them. Now the rest of them are too complicated to deal with in stage two. As you can see, they're not only attached, but they are in extreme highlight and shadows, and there is not a lot of place to sample from. So what is actually stage three? And that is frequency separation. We use that to maintain the skin texture, and then we paint the skin, the color and the tone of the skin all over again. And how do we do that? First of all, let's separate the color and the texture. And by the way, if you want to learn how to do frequency separation, there is a video on that. In this lesson, we're just going to use an action and you can download the action by clicking the link in the description. Once you load the action, it should be as Pix Frequency Separation. And if you cannot see the actions panel, go to window and make sure actions is checked. Now let's open up Pix Frequency Separation. If your image is 8-bit, play this one. If it's 16, play this one. How do you know which one is it? Have a look right here. It's RGB 8-bit. Also another way is go to image, mode, and right here as you can see, 8 bits per channel is checked. So let's play this one. Click on play. Decrease the radius all the way to the left hand side and slowly and gradually increase it. Stop at just the point where the skin texture goes away. Not the tattoo just the skin texture. So you can look at a couple of areas for reference. So I'm going to increase it a little more. So at about 10, it all goes away and we're going to leave it at that. Hit OK. There you go. Have a look at it. This is frequency separation. If you turn it off and turn it on, you don't see a difference. Even then, look inside, there is low frequency and there is high frequency. Both of them are separated. So this, my friend, is stage three. FS frequency separation. Now, what do we do right here? First of all, we just paint and cover up the tattoos. Now, if you're thinking this is too complicated, there are too many stages and too many techniques. Well, as I told you, these stages are based on complexity level. If your problem is solved with stage one, you don't have to do any of it. If it's solved with stage two, you don't have to go to stage three, so on and so forth. So I've tried to cover an extensive range so that no matter what you come across, you can fix it, remove it all. So just above the low frequency layer, create a brand new layer. This is for coloring. You can turn off the high frequency if you want to. Now take the brush, take a lower flow, like 4%, 5%. You can also go with 10% up to you. Take a soft round brush and start painting. For example, if you want to cover this one, just take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and just paint over it. Paint in a way such that there was no tattoo there in the first place. And it gives you way more freedom than any of the healing tools because you can paint whatever you want, wherever you want, completely sculpt and even change the shape of the entire image. But all of this independence comes at the cost of manual work. The more customized result you want, the more manual work you have to do. Now, let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here's the after. It is completely lightened. Now, all we have to do is to go to high frequency and just remove it from there. So with the help of the patch tool, you can also use the clone stamp tool right here because this is just the texture. Just select that. You don't have to worry about lights and shadows because that's all color. Just remove it, gone. Now, it seems like this area has no texture, no problem. Just select that if you want a little bit texture, there you go. The texture just comes. If you want to improve any of it, you go to this layer, layer one, you can create as many color layers in between as you want. Take the brush and just if you want to brighten it, just sample the brighter colors and just paint right over there. And that is fixed. Similarly, we'll do the rest of the areas. Let us turn off high frequency and simply start painting. Now to keep everything organized, you can create multiple layers. So this was layer one. You can also create one more layer at the top. This is just for organization. So if you feel that one area is not looking right, you can just simply turn off that layer or control its opacity. Now, as you're sampling and if it's not sampling properly, select the eyedropper tool right there. Make sure it is all layers or current and pillow. Let's go back to the brush and resume painting.
Now that the overall coloring is done, I'm excited to take a look at how it looks after stage three. Let's turn on high frequency. This is how it looks. Have a look how lightened the tattoos have become. So this is the before and this is the after. That in itself is a massive difference. Now there are some texture of the tattoos left. Trust me, it's not going to be as hard as painting all of these colors. Select the high frequency layer. I recommend making a copy of it. Why? First of all, this is a projection layer. So we'll have to be working on the same layer. We cannot just stack things up since this is a blend mode right here. So in that case, just have a copy or a backup. Press Ctrl or Command J. Turn one of them off. Momentarily, the sharpness is increased too much. So this is the copy. Let's turn it off and work on this one. And right here, you can use whatever you want. The patch tool, the clone stamp tool. Now keep in mind, while you're working with the clone stamp tool on the high frequency, make sure sampling is set to current layer only. If you don't want to sample anything else, if it's current and below or all layers, it's going to create an issue. If I sample right here, if I try to paint, it's going to create that weird color. We just want to sample the texture. That's it. For it, make sure it is current layer. And you can easily remove these. Sample this, paint on that, gone. Sample this, paint on that, gone. We are just sampling the texture. And you don't have to worry about any of the color right here. You can also use the patch tool if you wish. While working with the clone stamp tool, you can also decrease the flow. If you want to create some pores, you sample from here, you paint right here. There you go, my friend. All of it is gone. Now, there's a slight problem with that. To some of you, these areas like the neck might seem too smooth. So how do you get all the roughness? There are two ways to do it. Just simply make a copy of the high frequency layer, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button to create a negative mask and just add the extra texture in areas where you need it. With white as the foreground color, take the brush, flow at 100 and just paint on areas where you need it like the neck right here. There you go. We add that texture easily. No problem at all. You can make one more copy if you wish. A little more texture. And again, you don't have to have it in all of the areas. So I'm going to paint it all black and just bring back texture in few of these areas by painting white in there. There you go. Still the neck looks smooth. If you do want a little more reality, you can definitely try the skin texture transplant. What that is, you might ask? Well, We'll simply transplant the skin texture. That's exactly what that is. Let's take a similar image with a similar lighting. The color of the skin really doesn't matter in real life and in Photoshop as well, because we're not going to be using it anyway. And it should not be used to differentiate things, but to unite them. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll unite them by pressing Control or Command V. We copied it, Control or Command C, Control or Command V. Place it at the very top. The light on Lil Wayne is coming from the right hand side and on this neck, it's from the left. So let's flip it first. Control or Command T, right click, flip horizontal. Now let's try to match that. Make it a little larger. Now we can warp it. Right click on it and then choose warp and try to match it just like this. Okay, there you go. This looks nice. Now let's take away all the colors by pressing Control or Command Shift U. There you go. Go to filter, convert for smart filters so that we can change the value later. Let's go to filter, other, high pass. For now, let's keep it at 55. Hit enter. Now change the blend mode from normal to overlay. Take a look at the magic. So much more better. Here's the before, here's the after. This is drastically changing everything. And now click on the mask button, take the brush, take a soft round brush and erase the areas that you don't want. You can also use the same technique for the chin as well. This area particularly is looking very smooth. No problem. You can open up stage three and we made a high frequency copy. Let's select the mask, take the brush, white as the foreground color and just paint on that area a little bit. And that kind of fixes that. That is the whole Oxford dictionary of removing tattoos in Photoshop. Now you don't have to do all of this only in extreme cases. And I wanted to show you all of the situations that you might find yourself in. That's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. This video is made possible by all of these nice and amazing people who support Piximperfect on Patreon and help keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.